بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد The 13th juz of the Quran continues on with Surah Yusuf and so it begins this juz or this para begins by mentioning uh, what happened after Yusuf alayhi salam was freed from prison and so he was called by the king to come you know in his presence because he interpreted for him the dream and so basically uh, you know uh, it shows us how Yusuf alayhi salam went from being a young boy who was alone found in a well to you know uh, becoming in a very powerful position during a time of crisis in Egypt and so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose him to a high level and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how uh, the the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam came to visit Egypt and what took place between uh, you know them and Yusuf alayhi salam who recognized them but they did not recognize him and uh, how uh, Yusuf salam, requested them to go back to uh, their father and bring uh, their uh, younger brother Binyamin and uh, uh, the entire story of what happened there and how you know Yusuf salam, plotted uh, in order for them to come back uh, and uh, you know by placing uh, uh, you know something uh, that belonged to to him in the uh, in the in the luggage of uh, Binyamin, in order for Binyamin to remain with him. Uh, at any rate, this entire story uh, it has many many lessons uh, that can be uh, mentioned, but obviously the time does not permit us to do so. Uh, in the end, in the end, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala tells us how uh, Yusuf alayhi salam is reunited with his family, his mother and his father, and. Uh, before that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us of uh, what his father went through, Ya'qub, what he went, went through of grief, of sorrow. Uh, but yet, uh, even you know, during those difficult times, he did not show any, any uh, anger or stress, uh, but rather he uh, turned to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And he said, to you, O oh Allah, I complain. My complaint is only to you and not to anyone else. I'm not showing any of my distress, any of my sorrow to anyone else, but rather I turn to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and I am going to be patient. I am going to be patient. And so basically, what this shows us is that through Iman and patience, through Iman and patience, the victory of Allah comes and the relief from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes. And this is something that uh, Yusuf alayhi salam even told his brothers. In the end of the story, Yusuf alayhi salam, he told his brothers that it was these two things, uh, or rather it was patience and a taqwa that, you know, uh, basically led me to, you know, the position that I uh, uh, reached uh, in Egypt. And so uh, this shows us that through patience and iman and through taqwa, uh, a person achieves everything in this dunya and in the akhirah. Uh, Surah Yusuf then ends off by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning some of the signs in his creation and also mentioning that uh, you know messengers were sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, the biggest point that Allah stresses on at the end of this surah is that these stories that Allah relates to us in the Quran they are for deriving lessons as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says uh, that these stories uh, are uh, ibar they are for lessons that we uh, that we may learn uh, through them and so this is something very important to remember that uh, the stories of the Quran uh, are not uh, simply to relate to us history. Uh, the Quran is not a book of history, but rather it mentions these stories in order uh, for us to learn the lessons from them. 
Uh, after that, we move on to Surah Hud, Sur uh, or rather Surah Ra'd, Surah Ra'd, and Surah Ra'd, which means thunder. Uh, this is uh, a surah, a, a short surah, a, su a short surah, uh, in which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala focuses on uh, speaking about uh, the Tawheed of Allah, uh, the oneness of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And uh, the revelation that Allah has sent the revelation, and also uh, it focuses on uh, affirming the resurrection after death. And uh, throughout the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions great signs uh, in His creation which point to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, then uh, we move on after that to Surah Ibrahim. And uh, this is the surah that uh, finishes off this juz, the 13th juz of the Qur'an. And basically, uh, surah uh, Ibrahim, uh, it basically revolves around Allah's revelation, that Allah revealed uh, His revelation, and sent the messengers uh, to their people. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts by basically mentioning the story of Musa alayhi salam and uh, briefly mentioning that Allah sent other me messengers as well and all of these messengers called their people to the tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact one of the things that the messengers mentioned قَالَتْ رُسُلُهُمْ أَفِي اللَّهِ شَكٌّ فَاطِرِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ uh, their messenger said to their people, Is there any doubt in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Is there any doubt that Allah exists? Everyone affirms this. And so this is one of the proofs that can be used against uh, the atheists today. Uh, and that is that uh, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the existence of Allah is something that no one doubts. It is something that... Uh, is inbuilt in every single human being. Everyone knows that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exists. And then after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, one of the scenes uh, on the Day of Judgment. And that is, uh, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that uh, once uh, the judgment has been done and everything is done and people are destined for either hell or heaven, uh, shaitan, uh, he appears and he basically absolves himself from those who used to follow him. He absolves himself of all responsibility. He says, I have nothing to do with you people, even though it was him who deceived everyone. But yet he says, I have nothing to do with you, and he runs away. Uh, so uh, the lesson that we learn from this is that we have to beware of shaitan. This is how he is. This is his nature. He will mislead us. He will promise us, but then in the end, he will uh, free himself of any responsibility. Uh, after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us uh, a very, very uh, great parable uh, in the Qur'an, and that is the parable uh, of a good word. And this good word is basically kalimatu tawheed, the kalima, and how this word is like uh, the palm tree like a firm tree that, uh, you know, its branches are sticking out in the sky, giving fruit, uh, as opposed to the other tree and the other parable that Allah gives of a bad word, uh, and how it is like a tree that is uprooted from the ground, not giving out any good, uh, any good fruits and not benefiting the people. After that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, many blessings that he has blessed us with ni'am, ni'mas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how uh, the, the blessings of Allah cannot even be enumerated cannot even be counted and so uh, we should be uh, thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for these blessings then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, a very brief story of Ibrahim alayhi salam when, uh, when basically uh, he left uh, his son Ismail السلام, in the wadi, uh, the valley of Mecca, uh, without anyone. 
and uh, and uh, how Ibrahim alayhi salam made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and he made dua for his offspring for Ismail alayhi salam and his children and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes the surah by mentioning the final destination of the wrongdoers the zalimun and how we should not think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, doesn't know what's happening when the, the oppressors are committing their crimes and are massacring people, are killing people, and uh, are, are oppressing the people and behaving in a tyrannical way. We should not think that Allah is absent, that He doesn't know what's going on. وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ اللَّهَ غَافِلًا عَمَّا يَعْمَلُ الظَّالِمُونَ إِنَّمَا يُؤَخِّرُهُمْ لِيَوْمٍ تَشْخَصُ فِيهِ الْأَبْصَارِ But rather Allah is only delaying them. Don't think that Allah doesn't know what's going on. He knows what's going on. He's not stopping them. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is delaying them for a day. And that is the day of judgment. And Allah tells us what will happen on that day and how these people will be punished. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala concludes this surah. And with that, we come to the end of the 13th uh, juz or para of the Qur'an. With that, uh, we come to the end of this session. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.